Hey friend, Chris here from Wide Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I wanna give you a walkthrough of a USB and MIDI keyboard controller that finally meets the needs and specific workflows of Logic Pro users. What I'm referring to is the Launch Key Mark IV from Novation. Now, this is the fourth generation of the popular Launch Key series from Novation. And besides being an awesome keyboard controller that offers things like scale mode, chord mode, as well as an arpeggiator built right in, it also has specific functionality for Logic Pro users. So, you know me, I'm always on the hunt for hardware and software that meets Logic Pro user needs because while Logic Pro is awesome, Apple doesn't manufacture interfaces or controllers or anything else that we need, so we have to turn to third-party products. And I'm always excited when a third-party product finally takes up the torch for us users. So I want to give you a walkthrough of this awesome keyboard controller, but also what makes it so special for Logic users. So let's dig into it. First, let me give you a general overview of the Launch Key Mark IV, where everything is on the controller itself, and things to keep in mind as we go through this walkthrough. Top down, the Launch Key Mark IV, in my opinion, looks very elegant. And the standout feature to me, right out of the gate, is the OLED display in the upper left quadrant of the controller. The previous version, the Mark III, had a display as well, but it didn't have the same resolution and contrast and functionality as this current version, which I find much more informative and easier to view. On the left-hand side, of course, we have the pitch bend and modulation so that you can modulate and adjust pitch as you perform. Above that are the octave controls so you can move the entire key bed up or down by a full octave, and that adjustment will be shown to you in the OLED display so you know exactly where you are on the key bed. And you can always reset to the default position of the key bed by pressing both octave buttons at the same time. Also, a really cool detail is that you can actually shift the entire key bed by one semitone at a time just by holding shift and pressing on the octave button. So as you can see, I'm offsetting the entire key bed. In the upper left quadrant, there is of course the OLED display with the shift and settings buttons directly beneath. Now the shift button is something you're gonna use a lot because there's a lot of secondary functionality across the launch key. The settings button of course offers you the option to customize different settings across the controller. Beneath that are the left and right track buttons that allow you to navigate between the different tracks and channel strips in Logic Pro. Beneath that are four crucial functions of the launch key, starting with the scale mode. By enabling scale mode, you can ensure that the key bed of the launch key performs within a fixed key and scale, which I find especially helpful because I'm not super handy on the keys, I'm functional. So scale mode can provide those guardrails or an easy mode when you're trying to compose. To the right of the scale mode button is the chord map button. When enabled, you can perform entire chords within a fixed key and scale on the various pads of the launch key. Beneath scale is the arpeggiator button. When enabled, you can play arpeggiations across the keys and of course can be customized using the encoders. And to the right of that is the fixed chord button, which allows you to program a fixed chord that you can play up and down the key bed. To the right of all those buttons are of course the eight encoders that provide a variety of functionality, whether it be to customize the various modes of the launch key, as well as control different functions across Logic Pro. Beneath the encoders are the drum pads that you can use for performance, as well as switching between different modes of the launch key so you can control different aspects of your projects. And to the right of the encoders and drum pads are the workflow buttons that allow you, number one, to capture MIDI, number two, to either undo or redo a step in Logic Pro, number three, you can quantize your performances with a single button using the quantize button, and number four, the ability to enable or disable the metronome. And finally, below the workflow buttons are the transport buttons with which you can begin playback or stop playback, enable or disable the cycle range, as well as begin recording. All right, so of course, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough of all of these details, but before you get started with the Launch Key Mark IV, you will want to download the Logic Pro script from the Novation website. This script is what provides so much of that Logic Pro functionality with this controller. So download the script, install it. Once done, make sure that the Novation Launch Key is connected to your Mac and open Logic Pro. Logic will identify the Launch Key Mark IV and we'll ask if you want Logic Pro to auto-assign the various controls with the controller. With the script installed and the launch key auto-assigned in Logic Pro, we can dig in deeper with the controller. To better illustrate the awesome features of the launch key Mark IV, I'm gonna build up a riff here in Logic Pro. But before even digging into building a riff, I wanna first show you the awesome DAW mode of the launch key. To switch the mode of the launch key, all you have to do is hold shift. As I click on each drum pad, the launch key is switching between different modes. I'll enable both the transport mode in the top row and the DAW mode in the bottom row. Here, the drum pads adapt their colors in the top row 
to match the colors of the tracks and channel strips in your project. And I love this mode. It makes it super easy to select different tracks in the project so I can immediately record or adjust plugins or mixer controls. It's just immediately obvious. And as each track is selected, you can see the title of the track in the OLED display. So again, it makes it super easy. You know exactly what you're working with. Now the bottom row of drum pads are red for record enable. So you can see the highlighted drum pad is for tracks that are record enabled already. And I can tap on other red drum pads to record enable the other tracks in my project. Tapping again will disable those record enable buttons. Pressing the down button to the left of the drum pads switches the pad mode to both solo and mute. And of course the colors match the solo and mute colors in Logic Pro. So I can solo a couple tracks. Any tracks that are not soloed are blinking in blue. So I know that they are basically muted. And in the opposite direction, I can mute tracks just by tapping on the blue pads. Now there's a function button to the right of the drum pads. And when you press it, you switch the mode from track selection to that of the live loops grid. The top row pads are the cells in the live loops and you can begin playback of any cell just by tapping on those cell pads. The bottom row of green pads are for the different scenes in the live loops grid. This way you can begin playback of an entire scene by pressing on the green pads. And you can navigate up and down the live loops grid by pressing on the up and down arrows to the left of the drum pads. Okay, I'm gonna press function to revert the view from the live loops grid to control and navigation of my tracks. And next up we have transport view, which was enabled by me holding shift and tapping on the transport button, which is fourth from the left of the pink drum pads. Now transport is really cool. And that's because the encoders above the drum pads offering you different options of navigating your projects. The first encoder allows you to scrub your project so you can move the playhead forwards and backwards just by turning that encoder. The second encoder allows you to zoom in and out of your project horizontally. The third encoder allows you to adjust the loop start or cycle range start. The fourth encoder allows you to adjust the loop or cycle end. The fifth encoder allows you to jump forwards or backwards by markers in your projects. And the last encoder allows you to adjust the tempo of your project. Next up, I'm gonna switch the modes of the pads from DAW mode to drum mode. This allows me a velocity sensitive way to tap and drum beats right from the pads. All 16 pads are available to perform with as well as the key bed itself. Let me quickly tap in a beat using Drum Machine Designer and the Brooklyn Feels Kit. All right, so I've laid down my drums. Obviously my timing isn't perfect, but that's why we have the quantize button. I'll press quantize to immediately quantize my performance. Now I'll use the track button to switch to the virtual sync lead track. From here, I'll enable scale mode on the Novation launch key. This will allow me to perform my lead within a fixed key and scale. So number one, as I craft, I'm using just the keys within the scale, but also it prevents me from accidentally pressing on a key or a note outside of the scale. On the OLED by default, you can see that the launch key is set to C major, but I can change the root note of the scale just by turning the first encoder. As I turn the encoder, you can see that I'm going up in root notes. I'm gonna set the root note for G sharp. Then I'll use the second encoder to switch the scale. There's plenty of scales to choose from, but I'm gonna choose G sharp minor. With the third encoder, I'm gonna change how the scale mode is laid across the keys. So the first mode is snap to scale. And so every note that is not part of my chosen scale of G sharp minor instead performs the closest note within the scale. The second option is filter out of scale. So any note across the key bed that's not part of the key and scale won't play back when I press on it. The third option is easy scale. In this mode, all of the notes in my scale are laid across the white keys so I don't have to worry about any of the black keys and I can just perform only using the white keys. So I'm gonna stick with G sharp minor, set the scale mode to easy mode, and I'm gonna quickly record the lead idea that I have. Using the same scale mode, I'm gonna select my bass track and also perform a quick bass line. With 
with my drum, bass, and lead idea recorded. Now I'd like to record a chord-based idea. Now there's a couple different ways I can go about this. Number one, I could use the chord maps of the Launch Key Mark IV. Number two, I could program my own user chord. Or number three, I could use a fixed chord. With chord map, you just press the chord map button. Now with the blue drum pads, I can play chords within the note and scale that I've set with the scale mode. So if we take a listen to a couple of these chords, And I can go up and down in chord octave using the up and down arrow buttons. The orange buttons are performance pads. By holding an orange button, each chord pad will play a variation. For example, holding the first orange pad, I can play an arpeggiation up through the notes of the chords. For this mode, I'll have to tap on the chord pad repeatedly to arpeggiate through the notes of the chord. The bottom orange pad is the arpeggiation down through the notes. The top and bottom middle orange pads allows you to play various inversions of each chord as you tap on the chord repeatedly. And the last two orange pads perform a bass note and chord as well as a chord split. You can also latch a mode by pressing on the bracket icon to the right of the orange pads and press on that orange pad so you don't have to hold it the whole time. User chords allow you to program your own fixed chord onto the drum pads. To do this, hold shift and press the user chord pad. Next, hold down any one of the blank pads, then play in your chord on the keys. This way you can play your chord with the pad and you can even transpose the chord up and down using the up and down arrows. To remove a user chord, just hold function and tap on the user chord pad that you wanna remove. From there, there's fixed chords that you can program up and down the keys of the Novation Launch Key. To do that, you just press and hold fixed chord, and then you play in the chord, and you can do this by pressing all the keys at the same time or in sequence. Now I can play this chord up and down the keys just pressing one note at a time. Press fixed chord again to release the chord. For this riff, I'll use the chord map of the Launch Key to play in my idea. All right, so I have drums, bass, lead, and some chords. This is a perfect time to take advantage of the plugins, mixer, and sends modes of the Launch Key Mark IV. I'll hold shift and press on the first drum pad to enable plugin mode. With plugin mode, you can adjust smart controls using all of the encoders. Now it's really important to state here that obviously the encoders work from left to right, and there's even two banks of encoders by pressing the up and down arrows to the right of the encoders. So you have control over all these smart controls that are on screen, but it can be easy to reach and grab the wrong encoder here because nothing is labeled until you start adjusting an encoder. However, if you hold shift on the launch key and then adjust an encoder, you can see which smart control is assigned to that encoder, but no adjustment will be made. So I can see here for my Brooklyn Feels kit, the first encoder is the high tone, while the second encoder is the drive, so on and so forth. So now that I know that the high tone is the first encoder, I can make my adjustment. And we can see on screen, you can see the high tone is being increased. And the same applies for any other track. So I'll choose my track with Alchemy because Alchemy has this XY pad that takes up a lot of room. All of the controls are not on one page, but instead is shared between the transform and controls tabs. Once again, I'll hold shift, turn an encoder to see, okay, that's reverb. We have sync, cutoff, filter depth, and I can keep going until I find the control that I want to adjust. Now I'll hold shift and press on the second drum pad on the top row to switch to mixer mode. Here, the encoders have three different opportunities, starting with number one, the faders. Each encoder corresponds with the track of the drum pads with the drum pad set to DAW mode. So the first track is my drum kit. So I can use the encoder to increase or decrease the fader position for my drums. And it keeps going from there for each and every other track laid across from left to right. If I press the down arrow to the right of the encoders, I now have control over pan for each track. And the third page pressing down is the EQ mode. If there's not already an EQ loaded onto a track, an EQ will automatically be loaded. But from here, you have four bands that you can adjust. A low shelf, two parametric bands, and a high shelf. 
Just think the odd encoders, 1, 3, 5, and 7, are for frequency, while the even encoders, 2, 4, 6, and 8, are for gain. To the right of mixer mode is send mode. So again, I'll hold shift and tap on the third drum pad of the top row, and send mode is exactly the way it sounds. The encoders at the top allow you to adjust the send levels for each of your tracks, and you can even switch between different send slots using the up and down arrows. So I can quickly dial in some reverb for each of my tracks. What this means is you have full control over your projects in terms of plugins, mixer, and sends, in addition to transport and just DAW navigation right from the launch key. And of course, there's the arpeggiator mode of the launch key Mark IV. Just by pressing on the ARP button, you have control over the BPM of the arpeggiator, the swing, the rate, the gate. There's a lot to dig in here with the arpeggiator, but probably my favorite thing about the arpeggiator on the launch key is if you hold shift and press on the ARP pattern drum pad, is that you can actually change the pattern or the rhythm of the arpeggiation in a step sequencer sort of way. So you can remove certain steps in the sequence, and with the function button, you can add an accents, ratchets, which is double hits on certain notes, as well as tie or link steps together. And as if this wasn't already enough because there's so much here with the Launch Key Mark IV, there's also the companion components application that you can download from Novation's website that allows you to further customize the Launch Key Mark IV. I think the Launch Key Mark IV is a dream in terms of a keyboard controller for Logic users. And if you pair this with the launch pad, you can take full advantage of so much more in Logic Pro between these two controllers. I love them. So I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll check you for more later next week. Take care.